Welcome back to the NHL Gaming World Championship. Stockholm, Sweden, the site of the European Regional Final. We already have our two players moving on to Vegas. They are now going to compete for $5,000 and a first round buy in the final. It has been a pleasure to be here with you. I am Faisal Kamisa, joined by Arda Okal and Nasher. It has been exciting. It has been fun. We know what's gone down. Eki Hanselino. They have maneuvered their way through their respective brackets, both with very different roads to get there, but they are there right now and getting set to play in the final. Let's take a look uh, at the bracket. We've had so many great matches. This is how we got there. Again, the favorites dominating early. Mm -hmm. Two zip, two zip, two zip, two zip. We saw that. Eki then uh, having his way with Kriketsi. Hanselino, though, needing that third and final game, guys, against Playmaker to get to this final. When I look at this bracket, I think how appropriate it is. If you were to, on paper, predict this final, this is probably what you would come up with. It would have been a, a toss-up, perhaps, between Hanselino and Playmaker, and really, at the end of the day, it was. It came down to that third and final game. Yes, it was a blowout for Hanselino, but both of them more than able to qualify for the finals. This year, it was Hanselino's year. Yeah, and how about this? Eki just dominating the, the competition so far throughout this tournament. Really hasn't faced any adversity. So I'm curious what happens when Hanselino and Eki, the two best in all of Europe, go head to head. Will Eki crumble under the pressure? Will he stay strong? We'll find out. The Astro Gaming A40 tournament ready headset plus Mix MTR is the official gaming headset for the NHL GWC tournament. Get yours now at Astro Gaming. .eu. All right, that is time for talking done. Final match between Eki and Hanselino, the winner. Five grand in the bag and securing a first round buy in Vegas. Take us through this matchup, Nasher. Let's start with you, Hanselino, Eki again. I already said it. It's probably what many were expecting and hoping for. These are two, arguably, of the best players, not just in Europe, not just in Finland or Sweden, in the entire world. I'm curious what Eki's thinking. He just saw his best friend, Playmaker, get destroyed. 8-0. Yeah. to zero. Yeah. Obviously, Hanselino, he knows is a good player. I don't think he's ever seen him be that dominant before, especially on a big stage. So I'm curious, is Eki, he's got to come out strong. It's all about that first goal, getting on the board early, getting a couple goals, and then getting in Hanselino's head. We know Eki's a strong player mentally. We, we're not sure about Hanselino with his performance last year. I think this adds a little bit of fuel to the fire for Eki. Maybe a little element of revenge. I want to avenge my best friend. You just eliminated my best buddy from this tournament. It was supposed to be me and Plea going to Las Vegas. Well, guess what? Now I'm going to have to say I'm going to take that $5,000 away from you. And they're pretty neck and neck in terms of the statistics as you see them here. But that last one, Faisal, it stands out because in the seating, Han Salino was able to take the three-game series online. But let's see what happens here. Yeah, let's, uh, let's see. Both these teams with dominant rosters as well. And that might be a reason why they've gotten to this spot let's start with Eki's again that first line doing a lot of the damage yeah Eki's lineup there's not that standout player he's just got an overall good team we have Eichel Matthews Ajo we've seen that first line come up huge in these games obviously his defense strong as well there with Carlson Wierenski we got all the Americans McAvoy in the mix and Hannafin as well very strong lineup his goalie playing unreal as well flurry his first goaltender pick opted to go with the second and Vasilevsky's been strong for him imagine Vasilevsky being a second pick in the draft that's that's how rich this draft was well on the other side Hanselino's lineup we got the first pick overall in the draft he's taken Connor McDavid we saw him score on a penalty shot obviously in the last game but it's that entire line, especially Artemi Panarin, who has contributed in a huge way for his team. Panarin has been clutch for Hanselino in this tournament, but all roads lead through Connor McDavid. Connor McDavid is definitely, by far, the best player in this game. And you can see it here, particularly with the synergies that Hanselino has activated. McDavid is nearly unstoppable. McDavid may be the best player in the video game. We'll see who's the best at playing the video game. It is time for game one of our best of three series between Eki and Hanselino. Our final is set. 
The 2018 NHL Gaming World Champion, Eki, will return to Las Vegas to defend his crown. But will he book a spot in the Final Four, or will he have to fight for that fourth and final spot, having lost here against Hanselino. Both of these two competitors very familiar with each other. They have competed in Europe, in Finland many times, whether it's versus, whether it's in sixes, six on six competition, one on one competition, they know each other well. And here they find themselves sitting the final two, the European Regional Finals in 2019. One of them having tasted this before, the other one experiencing this for the very first time. So. I want to. I want to know, Nasher. The favorite in your eyes right now is who? It's hard to root against Eki, right? right? He's always right. good under pressure. This is the biggest game that he's had to face this entire year. Obviously, won in Vegas last year. Had a, quite a few big games there. The only thing is, he hasn't faced adversity. He hasn't in this tournament. He didn't lose a game all of last year in this tournament. He has lost two to Hanselino in their most recent buildup as well. How much does do those three games weigh into what's going on here? Do they matter at all? Is this a completely clean slate? Because again, we just saw a three game series between Pleamaker and Hanselino go three very different ways. Does that head to head record mean anything at this point? Well, truthfully, Eki knows that he can beat anyone right, in this tournament, right? right? He, he probably was taking the seeding games a little bit lately. You know, obviously there's not anything hugely on the line. He cares about who he plays, but he knows coming here, he's got to go through all the good players regardless. Now, both of you got to see both these guys at this tournament last year as well and obviously Eki in the world final whose game are in your eyes has changed the most and gotten them to the point where they could be even more threatening than what we've seen so far if you were to ask them Hanselino would say that his game changed yeah. the most because he feels like he has been the most ready for any tournament that he has ever competed in he said that multiple times he felt like he's much more ready this year than he was last year and probably a, a lot of that has to do with the fact that he's been through the motions before but he hasn't been here before right he hasn't been competing for this five thousand dollars staring right. him right in the face before but Eki has again he says I know what to do now I know what to do now it's come through for him so far and again I imagine the elation of going to Vegas is already pretty good but there's still some serious stakes on the line here win or lose as the fist bumps get given uh, it looks like they're close to getting underway in this final but uh, I can't imagine, again, the pressure. Both said maybe they'll play a little looser. That's fine. Maybe that'll lead to an entertaining game for the two of you to call. But you can't take for granted what's on the line here, right? A, a chance to have to miss a round and not get upset or not get beaten by guys who are going to be good from the States and from Canada as well. It, there's still some pretty high uh, high stakes here. Yeah, listen, both of these guys are going to Vegas, but one of these guys has the chance to go to Vegas and only play two games right, of NHL right. 19. Like for making $50, the trip 15 for hours 50, away. Exactly. Right? Like, and, yep. exactly. It's not nothing, obviously, there as well. And yes, the, the runner-up prize is still good, but the difference between 50 and 15, it's massive. It's, it's massive, right? And so uh, you want to be the guy on top, and we're going to see who takes uh, early advantage. Game one starts now. So it all comes down to this, our European Regional Final between Eki and Hanselino. Eki in the white Toronto Maple Leafs uniforms and Hanselino in the teal San Jose Sharks. Eki has only been scored on once in this tournament. That's how impressive the returning world champion has been. Meanwhile, Hanselino scratched and clawed and fought, particularly in the last round against Eki's best friend, Fleamaker, eliminating him in a third and final game in decisive fashion. And so now here we are, early breakaway for Eki. Ops for the one-timer and converts, he scores one nothing. Oh my goodness, instead of taking the open breakaway, he curls away an early goal in this one. Eki knows what to do at all times, he doesn't take the, the for sure play that we would normally do, usually shoot it on a breakaway, he curls around one time or wide open in front. Eki has been making the right decision all tournament long. What is it about Eki's game that makes him so impressive, Nasher? It's just the way he sets up his plays. Everything from the breakout on one end all the way to the tic-tac-toe passing on the other. He's got uh, something to do in every single circumstance, whether that's going on a breakaway, curling around instead of taking maybe a little opportunity one-hander get, that gets poked away. He knows what he has to do, and there he does it early. So as we mentioned, in qualifying during the seeding, uh, in order to determine 
who would get what player. Hanselino did defeat Eki and as a result got the first overall pick in the European Regional Draft, which afforded him the opportunity to draft Connor McDavid. Finds himself trailing 1-0 in this game right now with 14 minutes to go. If you were to look at the rosters of both of these competitors and their real NHL counterparts in the previous season, Hanselino's point total far exceeds Eki's point total by about 100 points. And about a plus minus of 35. Around the same amount of goals, however. Here's Eki with the puck. Another goal, he scores 2-0. Two, two quick goals in the first period. This time it's Jason Pominville. That's his third line as well. Not the top line we usually see the goals from. Again, picture perfect passing. How about that? A little no look behind the back pass. Wide open in front, and that's a 2-0 lead. You know Eki's feeling good early in this one. Eki is particularly loving this right now as we take a look at the goal one more time. The one T, the one timer, converts for Eki for a two to nothing lead. There's the celebration. We got a flappy, yep, we got the koozie bird in the back. <laughs> we, we knew that was gonna happen. But Eki has, it, has actually said regarding Hanselino that Hansu is his toughest opponent. It seems as though Hanselino has Eki's number. And that's something that Eki has admitted to us in the player interviews this week. And he says, you know, experience is in Hanselino's favor. Five finished titles. He's played forever. He found a new level this year. But here he is, 2-0 over Hansu right now is Eki. Play continues. Here's Bjorkstrand for Eki. Looking for a third goal. Stahl. Zucker was at the doorstep. Couldn't find it. Zucker collects the puck instead. Nico Heeshear will keep it. Here's Heeshear for Hanselino. Hanselino with Carlson now in the neutral zone. Eki will not allow passage past the blue line. Instead, will pass Hansu's blue line with the puck. Keeps possession behind the net, looking for a quick wraparound. Nudivara has it. The play continues. Carlson, that redirects, but the save is made. His offense is so, there's such a variety to everything he does. You see one-timers, you see wraparound, you see shots from the point. And they're all coming in succession, one after the other. Incredible play from Eki so far. Still in net, Dubnik for Hanselino and Vasilevsky for Eki. Hanselino, one-timer. That is a blocker save. Waffle boarded. Eichel has the puck now for Eki. Here's Fowler for Hanselino. Fowler. Hanselino dangling back and forth with that L2. That brings you back and forth and back again. We've seen it all throughout this tournament. Used to effectively shield the puck. Trying to lure a poke check and thus a tripping penalty. Minute and change to go in the first period. Two to nothing lead for Eki. Eki scores that one through the five hole with Charlie McAvoy. You know Eki's a little confused about that one. Not the best shot in the world from Eki, but you know what? Sometimes you just gotta throw putts on the net. Still in a good scoring opportunity. He fires a wrister, it somehow trickles by, and Hanselino finding himself in trouble after winning huge. 9-0 his last game, he is now down 3-0. Almost poetic in a way. A quick receipt for that 9-0 loss. And this is exactly how that game began with a 3-0 lead in the first period for Hanselino against Eki's best friend, Bleemaker. And Eki might not be done in this period. He's got time for one more opportunity, perhaps. Three nothing at the end of the first. Well, that's a way to remind people that you are the reigning world champion. If we're talking about potential Hanselino advantages, 
we've seen them negated. And I was going to say up until that third goal masher, it seemed like Hanselino was still doing his thing, getting in the game. It took a couple of nice goalie saves, but to no avail. And then uh, a third goal might have wrapped this one up early. Yeah, a little bit lucky goal there from Eki. Little trickle goal, got in between the pads somehow, but he's finding a way to make offense in every single situation. Another opportunity, puck sitting there. Not quite able to go, but wow, this offense, his creativity. How about this offense right here? Possibly for Hanselino with McDavid leading the charge, but instead it'll be a save for Vasilevsky and Eki in our second period right here. Eki with a commanding three to nothing lead. Darlene from the point. It doesn't get through. Backstrom has it to Carlson. Carlson brings it all the way to the goal line. Will spin back around, but he will be bumped off the puck. Eki has it now. Zach Wierenski. Wierenski keeps the puck. Passes it around, looking for somebody between the hash marks, doesn't find anyone. Instead, Hanselino brings it into the offensive zone. A pass to Panarin. Panarin, playing the possession game, is Hanselino. Hanselino, dancing around, trying to create that space. Here's Backstrom. Stone to Shifley. For Eki, a pass to Stone, couldn't get the shot off. Still has possession. Deep in the offensive zone. Hanselino will collect. Here's Panarin. Panarin to Backstrom. Backstrom trying to split the defense. Keith gets it instead. Backstrom gets it back. The one-timer doesn't go for Anders Lee. Lee has it again. Back to Bufflin at the point. Here's Lee. Hannafin for Eki will collect it. Back come the Leafs. Eki's Leafs, the spin around. Here's Carlson. Carlson keeps the puck looking for the one-timer. Can't find anyone. 3-0, the halfway point of the game. A commanding lead for Eki, the world champ, in game number one of a possible three in our final. 5,000 on the line and a guaranteed final four spot in Las Vegas. Both of them already going, and that's 4-0. Jack Eichel, the culprit. The patience of Eki here, absolutely unreal. You see him circling around in the zone. He's waiting for that perfect good opportunity. And right there, Hanselino, he's really just got to figure out this defensive situation. He's not used to playing elite competition like Eki very often. Obviously, just came off of a nice and easy game. Maybe he's still in the zone of that one. We'll see if he can bounce back here. Still a lot of time left, and anything can happen. McDavid, huge! Finally on the board is Hanselino with Mika Zibanejad. Hey, anything can happen. There we are, 4-1. He's getting in his zone. You see a little smile on his face. He was kind of down and out earlier. Obviously being down 4-0. Tough goal to come back. 4-1, not as bad. A lot of respect between these two competitors. You can tell. Very palpable how much they think of each other. How many battles have they been through in similar, similar situations to this. Perhaps not on the stage as large as this, but definitely Many matchups between these two competitors. It's four to one finally. Hanselino with the monkey off the back. It's four to one. Kreider and McDavid with the apples on that one. So where do we go from here? Here's Hansu again with Zabanajak. Back skating across the blue line. Eki will strip him of the puck with Eichel now. Eichel and Matthews, a deadly combination as I say that. A huge save by Dubnik, however. Wow, what a play from Eki. Did a little L LT, L2 action, spun around a little bit, found the open guy. Sometimes your goalie bails you out, and that was a good chance there. Six minutes left in the second period. Eki with a 4-1 to one lead, and now Pominville. Across the neutral zone, will not get past that defender. An elite pass to Connor McDavid, and the manual goaltender does the trick just barely. That's a play you only see at the top level. Most guys don't opt to control their goalie. They let the AI handle it there, though. 
Eki, he knows what he's doing. Mind games, and it's a turnaround the other way. Eki on the board again, five to one after making a huge save at the other end. It'll be Stahl who gets on the board for Eki with the fifth goal. And Hanselino just rolling his eyes saying, oh, this is not the way I wanted to start these finals. This easily could be a 4-2 game with that breakaway, especially with a guy like McDavid. We've seen him score on breakaways and penalty shots a lot today. Unfortunately, not able to get it done there. Eki makes the most of opportunities. We saw him do it again there. That manual goal is so important in this tournament that really separates a great player from an elite player, being able to control that manual goalie naturally. Here's Carlson for Eki. Gives up the puck. There's Ben. What a diving save there by Vasilevsky. Back comes Michael Grabner. Here's Grabner. Speedy in his own right is Grabner. Carlson from the point loses it. There's Rasmus Dahlin. Dahlin to Ben. Grabner has it again. They've been on for a while now. Has that line for Eki. Here's Bjorkstrand. Bjorkstrand, oh, home hook tucks it home. A beauty pad save. Ben to Lee with seconds to spare in the second period. 5-1 for Eki. A huge advantage for Eki despite Hanselino getting on the board. And yes, you never say never, but this first game, it may be a wrap. However, it is still a best of three, guys. So what can Hanselino do in this period, even if he doesn't win this game, to instill and bring up that confidence going into game two? Yeah, he's got to get the momentum back on his side. He's been down before, obviously, with Plea having a big game two in their last series. Now's his chance. He's got to bounce back, get a couple goals on the board before the end of this game so he can then take it into next game. Third period is coming up. Eki in control of game one, looking to go up one in the best of three final and almost, just almost book a spot in the semis in Vegas as he tries to defend his world championship. Third period starts now. Both Eki and Hanselino are prominent streamers as well in the Finnish child community. Both of them stopped streaming as soon as they qualified for this tournament because they didn't want any other competitors to know anything they were working on or be reminded of their play style. Eki was using the stick lift in the offensive zone to perfection early on in this tournament. How common of a strategy would that be in this game, Nasher? Now, we don't see it a lot, especially at this level of play, because a lot of times that'll result in penalties. And obviously with these guys, one bad mistake, one bad stick lift, one bad poke check, that can result in goals and shifting the momentum. Why is Eki so good at keeping the puck like that? What makes somebody so good at puck possession? Is, hang on a second, but McDavid has an opportunity here, and it was a wide open cage with the manual goalie there, possibly projecting a, a move that was gonna come, but instead, the puck stays out of the net. Yeah, Hanselino couldn't decide what he wanted to do. It looked like he wanted to go forehand. He maybe wanted to go with the one-hander, and then he waited a little bit too long, was at the side of the net, and that one rang off the outside of the post. Eki again, this is his, oh, he scores! Just as I was about to say, he was gonna possess the puck for another minute in the offensive zone. Now I'll just shoot and score. Yeah, Eki just knows what to do with the puck at any given time. You see, sometimes sometimes he'll shoot it right away, sometimes he'll go on a breakaway, turn the other way, go for the one-timer. He just knows what's gonna go in, what's gonna work in this game, and he manages to do it every single time. We've seen him in big games, we've seen him down before, not in this tournament, obviously always being up, always being ahead, but he's just at the top of his game and carrying over all the momentum from last year where he was the world champion. This one is all but out of reach for Hanselino right now. Possibly already looking into game number two. This is a best of three series. Eki just looking to add to that lead. It was 9-0 for Hanselino in that game three against Pleamaker. Eki was there watching. And now the, how, how the tables turn in a matter of one game. It's now six to one for Eki 
in this first game in our regional finals. Slap shot. The puck was loose, still has it, does Eki. Loses it to Panarin, but McAvoy will collect it in the offense in the neutral zone. Here's Warensky. Warensky, great evasion. Looking for a pass, won't find one. Here's Heeshear on the counterattack. Nico Heeshear. Pominville instead picks it up for Eki. Here's Warensky to Stahl. Stahl over to Grabner. Grabner with the one hand toss makes that a beauty highlight reel. Oh Eki is not done. He's not, and doing that with Grabner as well. 81 overall, Grabner, he doesn't even care. Hey, I'll go for the one-hander, even with the, set, the third, fourth line guys. What an unbelievable play from Eki. Wow, look at the smile. He's just laughing, enjoying himself right now. How much of this do you think is just the fact that he knows that all the other regions are watching right now? The possible finalists in, your, in Canada and in the United States, and he's just saying, you know what? You, you better, if you're going to come at the king, you best not miss. Right, and everyone watching this, they saw Hotelino. He, he won his recent game 9-0. to zero. Eki, he doesn't care. He's going to do the same thing to Hotelino. He wants to prove to everyone he is, without a doubt, the best one in this tournament. And we'll see if he can continue to do that. Incredible scenes here in game number one. Six minutes and change to go in the third period. 7-1 to one for Eki. Already the most successful Chell competitor of all time as it pertains to tournament wins and prize money won. Looking to add another 5,000 to that here with the series victory against Hanselino. That in itself is an impressive feat. Yeah, I would say without a doubt, both of these guys, the most experienced Hanselino playing in a lot of European tournaments, Finnish tournaments throughout the years. Unfortunately, obviously hasn't had too much experience when it comes to getting to Vegas and making it deep in the GWC. Uh, Eki obviously being the only one to win the GWC so far. One of our better players. Two very, very experienced guys, two different play styles, and we're seeing it unfold here. Gonsolino looking for the wraparound, can't find it. Three minutes to go in the third period. Sometimes, perhaps due to the, dis the geographic distance, you don't often have the chance to, especially if you're stateside, to be able to play against the European players unless you're specifically uh, requesting to play them. And so, because of that, oftentimes there might be perhaps a bias towards U.S. and Canada players uh, in either rankings or just visibility. But Eki just has this undeniable trait to him to almost demand that he remain atop people's rankings when you're talking about the best child players in the game today. Right, and a lot of U.S. and Canadian guys coming up, they're probably looking at this, they're, they're, they're thinking to themselves, hey, I could beat this guy, it's easy, you know, look at it, I, I see his strategies, I see what he's doing, I know I can counter it. But no, once you actually get face-to-face, -face, we saw it last year in Vegas, once we have all competitors from Canada, U.S. and Europe, all in one place, you see they may have different play styles, but it's not better or worse. These guys are all very elite, and it makes for some interesting matchups further on down the line. So Aki will take a one to nothing lead in our European Regional Final with a statement making seven to one victory. Make it seven to two. Hey, for, for Anselino, yeah, he's laughing, but hey, at least he scored the last goal. A little bit of pride right there. And he's able to say, well, look, at least maybe a little bit of momentum is in my favor going into game two because I scored the last goal. Now I'm glad to see he's not too down on himself. He's probably looking forward to the next game. Like you said, he's ready to go. And it's seven to two, you know what? This game doesn't matter. Let's get into the next one. Well, possibly seven three with this breakaway. Oh, the flip! And where is the puck? It stays out of the net. Yeah, it's nice to see the spirits on both players despite the game being a blowout from the first period. It's Eki with the 7-2 win to take a 1-0 advantage in the best of three final. One foot in the semifinals in Las Vegas. 
Arda, look, we started the show asking what makes Eki so dominant. You said his patience. We saw that to a T with those first period goals, holding the puck, holding the puck, still holding the puck. I could say it five more times because he would still have the puck before making the pass that ultimately led to those first goals. Man, it, it must be frustrating if you're an opponent to not be able to get the puck off him when he's so good at holding it. Yeah, Eki is an analytics department's dream, right? Just, just keeping the puck on his stick, especially in the offensive zone, creating goals like that as we look at the highlights here. What I love about Eki is he's so patient. I mean, take us through, uh, Nasher, how he's able to just protect the puck and keep it in the offensive zone behind the net and just waiting for that perfect opportunity. Yeah, a lot of guys, when you play this game, you want to just throw as many shots on the net as possible. That's not his style. He's looking for the perfect opportunity. We see him turn up, turn away breakaways for the chance at that guaranteed one-timer. It's incredible that he has the mindset. He's looking not two steps ahead, not three steps ahead, four steps ahead for the play that's going to happen. Well, he's just a couple steps away from being in the semifinals in Las Vegas. Game two is coming up. While we get set up for that, here's a quick word from one of our sponsors. In case you haven't heard, Eki is the returning champ, and he's looking to continue his domination. A deeper look at Eki. I pretty much try to play every day. I don't really like to play that much against other people who are here, because then they can see like how you play and stuff. But especially against Blee Maker, I play a lot. And just my good friends who are good at the game, and then I play uh, 6v6 game mode with no computers. I play that, that the most, I think. Yeah, he's looking to become a two-time world champion in NHL, the World Gaming Championship in Vegas. He's got to win one more to get there. It is time for game two between Eki and Hanselino. And that first game was a 7-2 final score, which very much favors Eki because another thing to consider, Nasher, is the seeding in Las Vegas. Uh, your seeding, if a tiebreaker is necessary, will be based off of win percentage across all your games or goal differential. So in a game like that, where it's 7-2, to two, Eki is putting himself in fantastic position. Absolutely, and Eki, he's, that's probably what was going through his mind. We know him, he's looking three steps ahead, like we said. Goal differential, obviously very important for this tournament, and he's gonna try to bring it on again for this one. Oh, and by the way, Eki has yet to lose a game in this tournament, and he only has three goals against. And this is game number six for him, and game number two in this series. Another win here, and he wins $5,000. And he's guaranteed a spot in the Final Four in the Grand Finals in Las Vegas in June, a day before the NHL Finals, and a one-hand touch will start things off. Why don't we just pick up where we left off, Nasher? Oh my goodness, the one-handed tuck is impressive enough as is. For him to do it with that speed and the tic-tac-toe, boom, 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 one-hander. Out of nowhere to kick off this game. That's how you start one. Eki is, without saying it, screaming to Canada and the United States. Are you watching this right now? Pay attention. Watch what I do. It's exactly what he's saying. Incredible statements early on. Aho, Aho, Matthews, and Eichel, that devastating first line. And look at that windmill evasion, and that was almost the second goal. The one-timer was dangerously close. And here comes McDavid now. The speed, creating the space. Can he tie it up? No, he can't. And that will be a power play. Harvey draws the penalty. Connor McDavid. Wow, that one. We had a questionable call earlier. Could have been a penalty shot. Let's look, look at, at McDavid. Wierenski. 
Oh, definitely. I would have called that a penalty yeah, shot. Yeah, man, that one hurts a little bit. You can see Hansolino a bit surprised as well. There's the reaction from him. Puts his arm in the air. Give him the penalty <laughs> shot. <laughs> yeah, you know, tell us in the chat, what do you think? I have a feeling that a lot of people will be saying that is a penalty shot. But he does have a power play, and this is an opportunity for him to get back into this game. And at the doorstep, a save there. Eki. Now it's stall for Eki. Stalling for time to kill this power play off with a minute to go halfway through the power play. Here's McDavid now for Hanselino. Eki gets it instead. Hanselino picks it up again. Here's McDavid. McDavid the pass, he scores! Tie game! Okay, it's that combo again. How about it? McDavid with the speed to enter the zone kind of makes some separation between him and the defense. That leaves Panarin wide open for the cross across the middle. He's got that one-timer down, and there he is again. Hanselino, we saw him kind of down and out early, and now he's fighting back. Hanselino breathing a sigh of relief. A beautiful pass there. Almost a 360 with those soft hands of Connor McDavid. And we are tied at one with almost five minutes gone in the first period. That will be Panarin who slots home the one T, the one timer. And now here comes Eki, even strength. Hannafin has it at the goal line. Back to Matthews, top of the circle. Top of the other circle. Down to Eichel. I've been calling them the US Express on the same line and the puck somehow stays out. It was bouncing around, Eichel misses the net. Matthews still has it. Ajo. Look at that. Eki. Incredible possession. Hannafin to Carlson the shot. Finally the puck exits the zone. 11 minutes to go in the first. Eki with two options, tries to make the pass, still gets the shot off. Hansolino can't get the puck away from him right now. And he scores! Again, after that amount of possession, ooh, he's saying that was a spicy one. Huh, or Eki had, what, three, four straight minutes of possession there. The puck came out briefly for a second. He immediately controlled it, got it back into the zone, and he set up in his office behind the net. What a play. Okay, Eki deserves it. One more time on the broadcast. Eki is the hashtag Corsi God. Look at him react. Even he knows that was impressive. Two to one. 9.39 left in the first. But Hanselino now with an opportunity to tie it. Oh, the one-hand tuck. Don't count him out just yet. DJ Z-Bad ties it up. One-hander city here today in this last game. One-hander from Eki early on. Hanselino, hey, I'll one-up you a little bit. How about another? We have to talk about Eki's face-offs in this one. He was very proud of the fact that he picked four centermen straight in the draft, all of them with over 81 overalls in the face-off circle. But Eki has not been, if there was one area for improvement in Eki's game, it's definitely the face-offs. And you just saw it there. Yeah, big opportunity for Hanselino right off the draw. He made his way up the ice, set up the play, and a wide open one-hander. And here he comes yet again, same chance off the draw. Well, Hanselino in the offensive zone now. Zabanajad, nice pad save by Vasilevsky. Meanwhile, here comes Eki with Stone to Shifley. Shifley, met at the blue line, has to go back into the neutral zone. We'll lose it though. Wierenski to McAvoy. McAvoy brings it forward. More possession game here and McAvoy scores! Oh my! What a shot! 
it looked like Consolino had a couple chances to poke check there, but Eki, he used that stick handling in tight right there, curls around, finds just an ounce of open space, and he's able to bury it. Great shot from Eki, barred out. How impressive is it that even when Han Salino's able to tie it up the way he has twice. Oh, yeah, that's a layup. Sure, no problem. Wow. No problem at all. Eki's like, nah, this is easy. Makes it look easy. Certainly isn't. Three to two, but Eki, it's almost as impressive as taking a five goal lead like we saw in. And it was almost a two goal lead there. But for Eki to just have a response so quickly, and again, he's just getting the lion's share of opportunities here, Nasher. Yeah, against guys like this, it's, it's unbelievable. He's playing the best of the best in Europe. This isn't a random match online. He's able to make this happen just in the tightest of spaces. We'll see if Pontolino can bounce back here. Well, he's not for lack of trying. He is in the offensive zone. He's looking for those outlets. Lee has it, all misses the net. Matter of inches right there. Eki now will bring it back. Here's Stahl to Pominville. Pominville with just over two minutes to go. Has options. Again, in his office right there. At this point, you can almost call him Wayne Grecki. I like that. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to give him that one. <laughs> all right, that was actually very impressive. Chat. Yep, it took me a second, but I'll give you that. I was almost going to uh, call for an F in the chat for my... You no, guys were no. like, it went over your heads for we just got a on second. Board. We got on board, yep. End of the first three to two is your score. <laughs> Wayne Grecki is not bad, I have to say. I have to say. Listen, Eki goes up one nothing. Hanselina says, hold my beard. Gets himself back into this game. Ties it two different times, but it's Eki again, too dominant to end that first period. And now he's up 3-2, two more periods to go before he books a semifinal berth in Vegas. They're both feeling it. They're both having fun, as they should, of course. Remember, Eki said, now that I'm in the final, maybe I'm going to play a little looser. Well, giving up two goals certainly suggests that because he gave up that total going into this game. Now, still, Hanselino. Had the chances as they take a sir. selfie together. That's how that's chill dog, everything sir. is right now. They don't know that we're ready to go with this second period. They don't care. They're having fun out there, and it showed in that period. <laughs> Five goals that opener, Nasher. Yeah, how about it? Eki, it looks like he's had a dominant game. He's got the puck possession. He's got more shots. Pretty much every aspect, aside from the score, it's still a tight one, three to two. We'll see if Eki can run away with it or if Hanselino can bounce back even stronger. Well, Hanselino looking for the first chance here in this period. It is 3-2 for Eki. Now with McDavid is Hanselino. Oh, he scores! The 1-T! Yes, fist bump for Hanselino. I'm back in it. Guess who's back? Back again. Hansu's back, tell a friend. It's, it's unbelievable, the speed of McDavid. You see it every time he touches the puck, it leads to an open one-timer. It's absolutely crazy what he, what Connor McDavid allows Hanselino to do, and there's just another one right there. That pass, no look behind the back, no problem for Connor McDavid. I love that he looked at Eki almost like, do you mind if I celebrate this one? All right. <laughs> He glanced over just for a second as he tied it up at three early in the second period. Eki again with that patience. Panarin has it to Mantha. Back to Panarin. Anselino, though, possession in his own right, when he's not dumping it back into his own zone, his possession has been very good, particularly against other competitors in this, in this tournament. Yeah, they both kind of have similar play styles. We both see him circling around, waiting for that perfect opportunity. One time was in front. Um, right now, though, Eki's, Eki and Anselino evenly matched, as close as we can be. We'll see who comes up with this next one. Aho, uh -huh. to Eichel, 
scores. You could see that play forming. Eichel was completely unattended near the side of that net. It's one of those plays where it looks like it's easy to defend, right? You see the guy wide open back door, but the thing is, if you take your defenseman, move him to the guy back door, that's going to lead to the open mid slot wrister. So there's a play for every single moment in this game, and Eki knows what to do and when to do it. Have a look at it one more time. Dubnik completely unable to move over, was already down in stance and could not reach the other side of the net. And that will be a four to three score. This has been a back and forth matchup. Like a perfectly built staircase, this matchup has been a battle of wits between Eki and Hanselino. Brick by brick is what I was getting at. One goal apiece. 1-1, one, 2-1, one, 2-2, two, one, two, two, 3 That's what I... Faisal is questioning my metaphor, and you probably should too in the Twitch chat. It, was, it wasn't that great. It wasn't as good as Wayne Grecky. I stand by that one. Here's Keith to Bufflin. To Kreider. To Kreider. In the neutral zone. Looking for the pass to McDavid, can't find it. Here's Stone for Eki. Eki shoots that one, saved, but also went off the bar. Pinned up against the boards is Hanselino. SJ Sharkey pounding against the boards. The mascots get a lot of love in this game. Still 4-3. Eight minutes to go in the second period. Here's Demers. Hasn't seen a lot of ice time for Eki has Demers. This line in particular, but it doesn't matter. He scores. Jason Zucker, the culprit. A two-goal lead. Rare in this game. I think it's safe to say that Eki has figured out Hanselino's weakness. He, he just takes the player, curls him around towards the top of the circle, passes it across the middle, and even there, Hanselino had guys in decent position. Look, you see two guys kind of in the lane, but Eki with his picture-perfect pack passing is able to fit it through. And it looks like we may be getting a timeout from one of the players. I believe Hanselino trying to regroup here. First time he's been down two. He's decided to regroup, get his first line out, and try to turn this thing around quickly. Hanselino doesn't seem to have a definitive answer to Eki's puck possession in the offensive zone. What is the best way to be able to neutralize this? He's got to just get more aggressive. And yeah, that can result in some more goals. but. Listen, Hanselino plays his best when he's in the offensive zone, so he's going to have to get aggressive, maybe add a couple stick lifts, go for some big hits, make some big plays. Right now he's playing more passive a little bit, and that's just leading to those op open opportunities for Eki. In that situation there, you saw Hanselino still play passive, not opting to switch players there and allowing the AI to control certain defenders. But Eki was playing that to a T, but it doesn't matter because Hanselino finally gets on the scoreboard again and brings it to within one. Man, this is back and forth action at its finest. We haven't had a game like this all tournament. A lot of them have been lopsided. A lot of them, you know, two, three, Four goal leads throughout the game. This one, though, back and forth every single goal. Hanselino, the timeout coming in huge, had his first line on the ice, and he's able to get it done. This one is a duel, a classic Chell duel. Both of them landing points. Both of them impressive, highlight real goals. We have seen a lot in this one game. And we may also see how to tie it up. Keith has it in the neutral zone. Still has it, but Eichel able to rip the puck away. Here's Carlson. Matthews has it now. Eichel muscled off the puck but gets it back. Hanselino collects it in the neutral zone, but Eichel gets it back to Matthews, the U.S. Express. Here is Matthews. Matthews afforded some space near the net. Always dangerous against Eki. 
A minute to go in the second. Great dangle, Palmin but looking for the one hand. Oh my gosh, he was right at the doorstep. Was looking to make, preserve the two goal lead, but couldn't with seconds to spare. And time will expire. 5-4 after two periods. Anybody have a good line? Well, we know both these guys do, and they've contributed in this game right now. Nine goals through two periods. That's more goals Eki's allowed in this game than he has through the entire tournament. We mentioned goal differential, a huge tie-breaking factor in terms of seeding when it comes to Vegas. You wonder how much that's on the mind of the reigning world champ as he gets set to try to close this one out in the third. Yeah, and how about that ending, too? Right. Eki with multiple good opportunities. He missed the one-hander. Hanselino got a good stick on it. Rebound was sitting there wide open, but no. And you have to thank Hanselino breathing a sigh of relief. He's got a little bit of time to regroup here in between periods. We'll see if we can come back. Well, he should feel pretty good about himself as well. For every goal that he gave up, he managed to get one back, and he's just one away from tying it up. This could be the last period of the European Regional Final. Here it is. This was also the final score in game three of their three game series online in the seating. It was a five to four final for Hans Salino. The roles are reversed here in the third period as McDavid, a fresh, speedy McDavid, loses the puck for Hans Salino. A big hit there, but Matthews able to stay on his feet and still has the puck. Ecke scores! Another one-timer preserves the two-goal lead. That one is a bit unlucky from Hanselino. He went for a huge hit. Unfortunately, Matthews, especially with the fresh energy coming off of the period, not going to get knocked down quite as easy, and that's what led to this open opportunity. Matthews just trucked through the defense, able to get through, get and bang, up. top shelf. Eki very happy with that. The two-goal lead, crucial, particularly in the third period. Six to four. Eichel and Matthews, what else is new for Eki? They have been terrific this entire tournament for Eki. And he still has the puck back to what he does best. In the office, Hoffman has it. To Wierenski at the point, to McAvoy the shot. Barely misses the net. Hanselino picks it up. Here's advantage at to McDavid. McDavid to Kreider. In the neutral zone, here's Bufflin. Bufflin will take it across the blue line and pass it to Zibanejad, but Zibanejad will lose it. So here's McAvoy for Eki. A change of ownership in the neutral zone. Here is Hanselino with Panarin. Panarin spinning around, loses it. And Eki back and forth the last couple of minutes. Backstrom for Hanselino. Six to four with 13 and change to go in the third period. Now behind the net is Hanselino looking for a pass. Darlene will collect it, but here comes Zucker on a partial break. Will he be able to make it? He passes it to Stone. Stone creating space, looking for that shot, but can't fire it off. Here's Panarin to Kreider. Kreider to back to Panarin. Panarin spinning around. That L2 in full use. The shot doesn't make it through. Here's Stahl for Eki, almost halfway through the third period. Hannafin, back at the point to Stahl. Finally, Hanselino able to strip Eki of the puck. Lee. Lost to Eichel, and now to Carlson, Eki. And that will be offside. And we're dwindling down the time here. Eight minutes and 17 seconds left here. Hanselino, he's gonna have to get aggressive, but you know what that means? Penalties may be on the way if he's not careful. So we'll see if he gets a penalty. I'd say this is potentially game over. Eki obviously gonna capitalize. We'll see if he can stay clean and continue to play his game. We used words like frustrating and suffocating to describe Eki's style of play, and we are seeing it on full display here. Distributed away, Hanselino back on the attack now. With the breakout, here's Ben. Loses it in the neutral zone, back comes Eki. Eki with some options, oh, he'll score! 
Stars make it seven to four. The quick rushes up the ice are key for Eki. He gets into the zone so quickly. He doesn't have the fastest team in the game. That probably goes to Hanselino, but somehow he's able to utilize the speed and the diversity of these players and picks up another quick rush goal. Eki even said speed might be my biggest deficit on my roster, but I don't think it matters. He just went his second consecutive game scoring seven goals against Hansolino. And he might not be done here. Looks like one of the players will be calling a timeout there. I believe Hansolino may have already used his. It might be Eki calling a timeout, just wanting his freshest lines out on the ice. Keeping this thing rolling. A three goal lead with six minutes to go exactly in the third period. How impressive is this? Hansolino not willing to call it quits at all. A lot of fight in Hansolino. But Eki, the one getting the better chances in this series. And just under four minutes away from being $5,000 richer. And scores the dagger. That one is going to seal the deal. Eki again, the fast bricks. He didn't even get set up that time. Eki obviously known for setting up, getting set up in the zone, taking his time. No, these last couple goals, just quick rushes, and he's able to bury another snipe. Hanselino, you can see it on his face. Just not happy with that goal whatsoever. Oh. How happy was he to make it here, but how upset is he right now to see these goals go in? Eki with eight goals against Hanselino. 2.40 to go in the third. Get used to these two individuals, however, because both of them will be going to Las Vegas. Both of them will be representing Europe specifically Finland at the NHL Gaming World Championship Grand Finals in Las Vegas in June, the day before the NHL Finals. For Eki, it's familiar territory, an opportunity for him to reclaim the championship a second consecutive time. He is still the only one to hoist that trophy. A great save there to keep it 8-4. For Hanselino, new territory, going to Las Vegas, not watching it from his couch, but competing in the tournament. But he will have to go through that tough second place playoff for that fourth and final spot. And Eki, with a combined nine plus nine in this final, in this series, in great position to put himself as the top seed in the Grand Finals. Congratulations to Eki. Once again, won every single game, not a single loss, and he is your winner. The two will shake hands. They know they have another long journey together, just like this journey was here, to get through the European Regional Final. Eki is your champion of Europe once again. Both, however, will be representing the continent in Las Vegas in the middle of June. For Hanselino, after falling short a year ago, a bit of redemption despite losing the final. He'll have a month or so to work on his game before taking on the best from the rest of the world as well. But we got to talk about Eki, guys. 15 goals over two games, all of which we're pretty damn spectacular as well. It's just the ability he has. And again, Arda, you mentioned this. He's serving notice to the rest of the world that, oh, yeah, you might have forgotten about me. I'm still here, and I might be even better than before. Or more so, you put a bullseye on my back, but I'm going to dodge, and I'm going to be better. If you think that your practice will be good enough to take aim at the champ, think again. That's what Eki was saying with this statement. Three goals against going into the finals? Are you kidding me? Eki made a statement as if he couldn't make enough of a statement by qualifying for Vegas again? 
boy, I mean, he is riding high right now. And two dominating performances, not easy by any means. Playing against Tonsolino, we got the highlights coming up here. Look at the one-hander. The goals were just continuous, they were often, and they were highlight reels. Play after play, fast break after fast break. Anytime he had a good chance, he got it done, and that's what makes Eki the best. We have 12 balls in this game, guys. We still got to talk, and uh, we can continue to praise Eki. But let's talk a little bit about Hanselino, who, again, was down a bunch of times in this game, but managed to find himself back. And it was that third period that ultimately did him in. But those first two, he was step in step. That picture might be worth a little something, something. Nice selfie. Yeah. Uh, again, he was he was there. Just ultimately fell short. I mean, at the end of the day, maybe a little bit of it was he just had a sense of relief and he got the adrenaline dump because you made it to the finals. Yep. Like I said, Eki has been here before. He's experienced this, and maybe he just wanted that victory a little bit more in the moment because he wasn't satisfied with just qualifying for Vegas, whereas Hanselino might have been. Or maybe he was just a better person on this day. The good news is Hanselino has plenty of time to bounce back. He's going to be studying up. He, he mentioned last year when when he lost and didn't make it to Vegas. He was studying the tapes endlessly. He's going to do the same thing here today. He's going to figure out Eki, figure out his style, and then go into Vegas with a lot more than he knows right now. Here is your bracket. And again, Eki is going home with $5,000 more than he had coming into this day. He's also going home undefeated, guys. He did not lose a single game here. Very reminiscent of his run last year as well, where he was just simply, simply dominant. And you could even say wasn't really tested in any of these games. Can I just say that one more time? Because that is probably the most impressive part of this yeah. whole run for Eki. He did not lose a single game last year in the regional finals or the grand finals. And that streak at the NHL GWC continues. He has not lost a game here either. Unbelievable. And again, for Hanselino, he has those two losses in the final, just one in the buildup to it as well. We saw the great series against Plea Maker. We saw him get blown out in game two of that semifinal, only to blow out Plea in that third and decisive game as well. So again, full credit to both players for earning their way to Vegas. They certainly had to do that. But the cream rose to the crop, Eki and Hanselino on their way. We are going to head on our way to Carly, standing by in the Honda Road to the Finals area with the winner once again, Eki. Thanks, guys. Yep, the European Regional Champion again. Eki, congratulations. You played Hanselino, who you fell to twice in the qualifiers. Did you change your strategy at all to get those wins this time around? Well, actually, I've lost like four best of threes to him in a row. So, yeah, I didn't really even switch anything. I just... I don't think I've played that good and I don't even remember when I played that good so it was just I think good game from me and every shot went pretty much in so maybe the luck was on my side but who knows. You said these were a couple of your best games you think you've ever played why is that? I don't know I just played so relaxed I think the pressure pressure fell for me when I got, like guaranteed a spot to Vegas so I just played freely and I just have to get the same mindset in Vegas so I think it's very hard to beat me, beat me if I play like that. Speaking of Las Vegas, who are you taking? Have you decided yet? Well, my fiance is coming and a couple of my guys from the organization are coming. But yeah, and maybe play too. Maybe. Who knows? How fun. If you bring play, are you two going to be wearing the suits on that 15 hour flight to Las Vegas together? I don't know. It was pretty <laughs> uncomfortable last time, but I think, <laughs> but I still think we will rock it. <laughs> Congratulations once again and good luck in Las Vegas. We'll see you then. Back to you guys. So we did find the only thing uncomfortable on the way to winning the World Gaming Championship for Eki. It was wearing a suit, and I could vouch for that. I've worn lots of suits on lots of planes. Sure. I don't do that anymore. It is sweatpants and a hoodie because you want optimal comfort. But he spoke about being comfortable in that final, spoke about being loose. It led to 15 goals over two games. Again, most of which he said came because... After guaranteeing a spot in Vegas, he could be a little more free. He's got he's got a great poker face, right? I sure, mean, yeah. I think he's very calm most of the time yep. when he's playing. Probably the most calm competitor in this entire tournament, at least when you watch him. Sometimes he shows a little bit, but really he's got that calm, cool, and com collected demeanor. So when he has the weight off of his shoulders, like you said, that seems like an unstoppable Eki. Oh, absolutely. And this guy had a target on his back for this tournament. We saw what he could do. The target in Vegas is going to be even bigger. The EU guy, or the Canadian guys, the U.S. guys. They're going to be gunning for him. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out.